this is Mary over here at Images on the page, and today I'm going to be doing my May wrap-up. Now, in the month of May, I participated in two readathons. One was the Asian readathon, which was the entire month, and was one was the Bookamon Badgeathon, which also, in some cases, was the entire month. And as I talk about the books, I will also let you know what challenges they fulfilled for each readathon. So for the month of May, I read eight books, one of which was an ebook. I had three audiobooks and four physical books. I also had four three-star books, two four-star books, and two five-star books. And I'm just going to start with the lowest rated books and go up. Now, I do want to let you know that by my standards, th three-star books are not bad books by any means. They do mean that I enjoyed it and didn't find anything offensive about them, but I also didn't super love them like they were just enjoyable so I don't want you to think I'm like ripping these books down or really criticizing them like no like it just means I enjoyed them it doesn't mean I absolutely loved them or anything like that so the first three-star read I had is Krim <laughs> is Kim Reaper um this is a really adorable graphic novel that follows Kim who works part-time as a grim reaper while going to university. One of her classmates, Becca, has a massive crush on her and ends up being f dragged into Kim's grim reaping, which Becca is not too pleased about. Of course, other shenanigans ensue, but it is just kind of a really cute book. I think now, one of the reasons I did not absolutely love this book is all of the characters, including Kim and Becca themselves, were very over-the-top and very extra. And for some reason, for graphic novels, I like them to be a bit more low-key, a um, bit more natural. So there is that to consider, but this was just a really adorable read. And I might continue with the series. Now this does not count for the Asian readathon, but it did count for the Bookamon badgeathon, and I was able to get the pictorial badge with this, which was just read a graphic novel, manga, something based in pictures. Another three-star read I had in the month of May was Lady Castle. This one was the one I read on ebook, which let me tell you, reading graphic novels on ebooks are not the greatest idea especially when I was only able to use my phone which is like this biggish um so the letters were teeny tiny and very small um so it made it a bit more difficult but it was a very interesting entertaining book it is about this princess whose dad is forcing her to get married but until she agrees to a suitor he's keeping her locked in a tower which made me very not happy. I mean, yay that he's letting her choose her suitor, but basically she's stuck there until she says yes to someone. Well, um, all the men in this village or country or whatever it is, um, castle, go to war and basically end up dying or get killed, and one of them only one survives and comes back to deliver the news that all the men have died. And basically the women now have to run the castle. They have to do all the things that the men were doing. And it was just a really great look at gender, uh, gender non-conforming. And it also did had some really interesting discussions about grief and loyalty. Um, because while the older princess, while the princess who was locked in the tower is now free, is not doesn't seem to be super sad that her king, the father, is dead. Her younger sister is very upset by this, and they kind of butt heads just because they don't really get where the other one's coming from. Um, so I thought that was really well done. So this one didn't also apply for the Asian readathon, but it did count for the Bookamon badgeathon. I counted this for the diversity badge or the it's the rainbow badge, which had queer rep in it. My final picture-based book in the month of May is a manga um, called I Hear, the, I Hear the Sunspot by Yuki Fumino. This was a really adorable graphic novel about Tachi, 
who ha is hearing impaired and has struggled all his life with that. And because of that struggle, he has kind of closed himself off from really getting to know people. He doesn't really want to put the effort in until Kohi quite literally falls into his life and kind of breaks down those walls that Tachi has around himself. This, like I said, is kind of a really adorable, just kind of slice of life graphic novel. Um, I do, I did really like this book because it had that disability rep of ha being hearing impaired and it was queer. This is a translated novel because it was originally written in Japanese and it's considered a graphic novel. So that actually meets all four requirements of the Asian Readathon. So I technically completed it with this one book alone, although I did read another book um, to cover some other pieces because I was, I do want to read at least a few Asian authors, but which I was hoping to read more, but I didn't. And my last three star read for the month of May was Time Keeper by Tara Sim. This was a really interesting book. It's a kind of steampunk book about these mechanics who, when a, so they live in a world where clocks literally control time. So when a clock is broken, it messes up the time in their time area. So if it's a village or whatever the timelines are, like boundaries are, if the clock is broken, it, it screws up the time in that place. Um, and it follows Danny, who is the youngest mechanic, and he is dealing with a lot because his dad is gone not dead um he is actually stuck in a city where the where the time has stopped so the tower broke and caused time to stop and so danny's trying to figure out how to fix that and he ends up going to this little tiny little village um to fix their clock and he meets the clock spirit and it's just this kind of really cute okay it is kind of cute um, love story between a clock mechanic and a clock spirit. But of course it has a lot more than that. Um, it is pretty, pretty long. Um, I do hope to have a review up of this soon, so I'm not going to really go in depth. This also did count for the Asian readathon. It counted for the intersectional prompt. Um, since it is held, dealt with queer characters. And one of the other things that you had to do for the Asian Readathon was for every book that had an Asian character, it had to fo it had to highlight a different ethnicity of Asian. So with I Hear the Sunspot, it was um, Japanese, and I believe this one was Chinese. This also did count for the Bookamon Badgathon. No, it did not. That one did not count. Now, for my two four-star reads. They were a part of a series, so I'm kind of just going to talk about them together. Um, it was Super Powered's Year 2 and 3 by Drew Hayes. Now, if you watched my TBR, you would know I only had Year 1 or Year 2 on my TBR, and I didn't expect to really even get far in that, let alone finish 2 and 3. But I'm able to now listen to audiobooks at work, which is really awesome, and that means I can listen to a lot more. I absolutely love the series. I think they are so entertaining. They are so well thought out. They surprise me all the time. I just could not recommend them more. Now, the series is a whole super powered, so it's super powered year one, two, three, and four. So series as a whole, superpowers follows, is set in this world where superpower, su superheroes are a thing. Like, they're just in existence. People plan for them. Cities have, like, damage control. They have PR agents. Like, it's just, it's, people have superpowers. Um, of course, in a world where there's superheroes, there's also a hierarchy of power. So there's kind of superheroes. There's supers, which are people who have powers 
and are in control of them but haven't gotten the qualifications for whatever reason to become a superhero that's also a cool thing you have to become you have to go through training and certification to become a superhero and then there are powers which are people who have powers but do not have control of that power well the series follows five powers who go through an experiment to gain control of their powers and just kind of their life going through the hero certification program once they got that control of their power and this is just it's so good it's by one of my new favorite authors drew hayes i've talked about him a little with the fred the vampire accountant series um but i have to tell you these series are so much better they are so intricate and well thought out and just so he weaves so much into him and all the characters are so complex like i feel like i know them like i feel like i have conversations with them they feel like real human beings to me like they are not perfect by any means they have flaws but they also grow and it's just so good and if you're interested in superheroes and you kind of want that world this is a really interesting take on it because it doesn't just have superheroes which are a thing like it's set in a world that is aware superheroes are a thing and is also set up to use them basically so it's just it's really interesting i have talked about it before when i read corpies which is kind of a spin-off of it um but i would highly recommend also listen to them on audiobook because the narrator is absolutely phenomenal i have I've listened to a lot of audiobooks, some with okay narrators, not awesome narrators, even full cast audiobooks, and out of all the audiobooks I have ever read, this narrator is the best I've ever heard. So just, if you're gonna read them, listen to them on audiobook. And for my two five-star reads, so the first one was Super Powered's Year One. The only reason that that one got a five star out of a four star is I felt a lot more connected to it. There was not quite as much going on. Um, not to say that the other two are lesser or not as awesome by any means. It's just, I love that one a little bit more. There's a little bit more humor in the first one. And I just loved the humor. And that's what really pushed it up to the five star for me. The humor, because of circumstances, gets a little fewer and far between. As the years go on, I mean, it's definitely understandable by what's going on in the situations, but I just, I think that the humor just bumped it a little bit to a five. And my last book and best book that I read this month was Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I know that this is going as everywhere in book two right now for an all-time favorite, and honestly, I was prepared to tell you that I didn't love it as much as everyone else because that's just how I generally, that's just how it generally goes. I don't do it on purpose. It's just the books that a lot of booktube loves, I'm not a big fan of. Um, not to say that I don't like them, but they're just not my favorite. But this was everything everyone said and so much more. I have such a hard time putting into words how much I love this series. I just, I plan to do a review for it. I just, the, this book makes me very, it makes it very hard for me to English. Honestly, it just makes it so difficult. So this book follows um, the first son of the president, Alex, who kind of gets into a bit of hot water um, when he, there's kind of an incident at the royal wedding of, at England. I mean, he's forced to do some PR fixings, um, with the Prince Henry. And it's kind of just like a enemies to lovers and... <laughs> I honestly don't know what to say about this. I loved this so incredibly much. Like this 
at points had me in tears. It had me laughing. It was so funny, so witty. And I just... I would recommend this to everyone I know. It is a fantastic book. And if you don't like contemporaries, read it anyway. I'm not the biggest contemporary person. Just... I don't know how to put into words this book besides the fact that it is probably my new one of my new all-time favorite books if just read this um <laughs> this does not count for the Asian readathon whatsoever. I did count it towards the Bookamon badgeathon. I um, counted this for the Amor badge, which is just a romance slash contemporary. This is both. I Like I said, I hope to have a review up soon, but for now, my flailing of words is gonna have to work here. So those books, those eight books, were the books that I got, I ended up reading in the month of May. What did you guys read in May? Did you have a book that meant super a lot to you? Um, did you have any really good reads? Did you have really shitty reads? I would love to know down in the comments below. And until the next video, ta-ta for now!